Live from the Export Beer Garden Studio and brought to you by Export Ultra, the beer for here. This is the Agenda Podcast for Wednesday the 24th of July. The Agenda Podcast, the home of sporting nonsense and claptrap. Brought to you by Export Ultra. Lane, welcome back from your most recent stint in witness protection. Yeah, in and out, isn't it? It's quite an emotional time for me, but I'm back. I'm back for good this time. Uh, All I can say is, look, say what you want about David Seymour, Manaya, I know mm. you're a huge fan. Uh, he got pseudoephedrine back into pharmacies. Yeah. And I was feeling crook yesterday. Like, I, everyone's going down with the flu, I know, but I got stuck into some pseudo. I, I found myself last night, I made three dinners. I've made pumpkin soup, uh, <laughs> and then I put some mints on for some, uh, for some spaghetti bolognese. Uh, and then I cooked a chicken, like, risotto thing. And then I did some cookies. And then I cleaned the house. Holy shit. And the wife came back and goes, what's wrong? I said, I'm feeling great. And she looked at the end of the bit kitchen bench, and there was just a sea of, like, empty packets of pseudo. I wow. was, it was, I'd highly recommend it. I might start doing it recreationally. Yeah, well, I think that was the, half the problem why I got banned initially. But Recreational pseudo effigy. Yeah, so God bless uh, David Seymour, and God bless pseudo is back on the shelves. So if you've got the flu, just smash some of that. Yeah, so yeah. you go and buy it, then you turn it into meth, smoke that, and then make three dinners. Is that how it works? Yeah, correct. Yeah, right. Yeah, it takes, <laughs> I mean, it's a process. I got steered away from it last time I was, I was in at the doctors i was like look i'm going down with a bit of a cold here I was like can i get some of that david seymour yeah and they were like no how about you just have some of this codrill stuff it's like no yeah come on mate I can, no yeah come on mate. if you're going to tear the treaty up at least let me get the pseudo <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't have it both ways dave <laughs> it's a bit like up. trying to get antibiotics these days you have to go in yeah. pretty much like crawling on the floor <clears throat> with kind of Kind of gangrene falling off here before they <laughs> give you. A, yeah, they go like, nah, you're, they're, they're heavily resistant these days. We can't just dish them out. So yeah, give them to me now. I always think that with those, like, well, look, I could give you the stronger stuff, but there are side effects. Like, are the side effects worse than what I'm going through right now? Yeah, because I'm willing to take the risk. Well, this is like it is, and it's the same with when they give you the green whistles. A good example. It's like they can tell when you're in pain, or they can tell when you're really sick. Yeah, I remember when I was in hospital, I really wanted to give morphine a go, and oh, yeah. they'd go, "What's your pain?" levels and I was like what's the scale and they said oh like one to ten you know ten is unbearable yeah. so you got yeah. nine I'm like oh, eight and they're like yeah and I guess six <laughs> and then that guy I'd go five and D- go, uh, yeah <laughs> and then so they just guilted me back to five because I wouldn't they never gave it to me unfortunately P- people are generally unresponsive at around eight yeah. so <laughs> you're that's, saying that eight was the, no, you usually just curled up going they know you're full of shit, yeah. Hey, big news today. Yes. Um, Vegas, everyone will see on their socials, Vegas, everyone's trips go live to go to Vegas. I know Grab a Seat have got a charter going with yes. the Warriors. Uh, we've got a slightly different trip organised, okay. uh, and we're going through Boys Trip, um, and we are going lo- via uh, LA, so we're not going on a charter. We're going via LA purely because we're going to have a night in LA and we're going to go to an NBA game. Oh, what? And then... Why are you telling me this? And then... We're going to go to Vegas for, <sighs> for three nights or four nights and then do our thing there and then go. So ours is a proper sports tour. Yeah. Uh, and they are uh, on sale now um, from 11 uh, a.m. today. Um, just if you want information on that, text Vegas to 3236. You'll get a link to it. You only have to pay a 25% uh, dep- deposit. There's the full package before Whammo, which is about just over six grand. And then there's the land only, which is 1800 It's up to you what you want to do. But make sure you put the uh, code word ACC in because you get a hundred bucks off, a hundred and fifty bucks, I think, off um, the main package and fifty bucks off the land package if you put ACC in the in the promo code. So that's and obviously this isn't part of the promo, but my degenerate brain whirring is that's a free hundred and fifty to slam straight in the pokies when you get to Vegas. Correct. Is the way I'm looking Correct. at it. Correct. Yeah. So we're not we're not part of the official one because I don't think we re- re- that's not us. No. Uh, we don't really belong to the official. Uh, also, they're going to make us do stuff once we're I over know, there. That- I know, but this one here, this one is a real home wrecker, okay? This one's a home wrecker via LA to an NBA game. Ugh. The schedule's not out on the NBA, but we're pretty sure we'll get like a, a Clippers game or a um, Lakers game uh, on that day yep. that, we, that we land. Um, same as last year. The boys' trips, guys, did it, did it last year. They took 50-odd last year. Great time. So we're looking to take a couple of hundy. So, yeah, Vegas to 3236. You'll get all the details there. 25% deposit. Just do it. Don't ask Don't ask permission. No. Ask for forgiveness later. That's the only way to do it. So do your instincts, follow your gut. Uh, I don't really have a bucket list. The only thing that's that I'd love to do is watch an NBA game live. 
Watch so many of them on TV. Yeah, we had a wedding though. So I don't yeah. even have a t- This is why I wish you hadn't, hadn't told me this this morning. <laughs> we went out to the Warriors on uh, Monday and I asked them, I was just like, look, we're going to Vegas. Oh, the ACC is going to Vegas. My mate's wedding's on the same weekend. What do I do? And the same, everybody asks the same questions, like, how good a mate is he? And I'm like, yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a pretty, party. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the thing. It's, it's like a whole thing. Will it last, this, wedi- this marriage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah pretty, pretty rocks, rock steady. Yeah, okay. um, fiance's great. Everyone loves her. So, oh, okay. yeah. It's not one of those ones where you go to those wedding, you go, this is not going to last. No, I don't. So, yeah, because that's right. Because then if, it's, if you know it's not going to last, you're like, right, I've got two, maybe three years of people being like, you weren't at the wedding. And then in the fourth year, I'll be at the second wedding emceeing. It'll be like, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't make the first one. So well, the yeah. second one will be in Las Vegas anyway. <laughs> well, this is the thing. Now, like, I'd already made my peace with it. I was like, you know what, bugger it. Because everyone keeps asking me, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I was like, look, I've made my peace with it. Yeah. I can go and watch the Warriors at other times. Maybe if we get over to Magic Ground, we go to the NRL Grand Final. I'll, you know, it'll alleviate my pain. Now I find out you're going to an NBA game. Yeah, sorry about that. I've got some phone calls to make after this podcast. Vegas to 3236. <laughs> can I text it? <laughs> um, can he text it? What if I win a trip for him? Oh, do you want me to set up a, a fake winner? Oh, yes. And he has to tell his fiance, hey, yeah. I know you've poured your heart and soul. Been thinking about this since you were a little girl, bought the dress, the whole thing. Yeah. I've won a competition. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking I'd do it for you. Oh. But you won. You go, I've won this competition. And yeah. And I'll be like, it's your own competition. He's like, it's still a competition. I've got to take it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. And you take him. I don't think that'll fly. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I know. Put a stand in for the, for the groom. I don't know. Ugh, it's just made my life so much harder. Um, at the end of this podcast, we have a dozen um, cool. yours pleases to get through. Okay. So we're going to rattle through the um, top of this podcast. But just quickly, uh, we didn't manage to address it throughout the week. You're the only person I know who knows anything about it. But the Tour de France finished on like Monday morning, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. every mammal in New Zealand was all over it, Yeah, uh, watching, it watching the catch up. Uh, even our own legal counsel, Paul Gillick, he's a massive Tour de France fan. Oh, really? I was in a meeting with him on my desk, and we're trying to go through some sort of legal issue you don't even know about. You've yeah. probably got a good idea what I it is. I do know about um, it. We're going through that, and he was, wasn't was paying attention, and he was looking <laughs> up at the TV screen, and I said, Paul. He's like, oh, sorry, I'm just a massive a massive Tour de France fan. Uh, he's right in the wheelhouse, you know, 40s. Yeah. He's, he's skinny as anything, about the size of Pogaccia yeah. uh, and uh, Vingegaard. And Pogaccia um, did win. Yes, he did, and I think – uh, this is great for Bogaccia, but I mean, uh, Vingegaard was injured coming into this, right. and also, but he, I said to I said to old mate uh, Paul, who's a big cycling, I say, you Bogaccia man or Vingegaard? Because that's the first thing you ask, you right. Bogaccia or Vingegaard? It's a bit like are you a Lionel Messi or a Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Um, and he's like Bogaccia because Bogaccia races in all the races. Apparently, Vingegaard just trains all years and goes trains all year and goes to the Tour de France. Doesn't do the Giro uh, Italia or right. Tour of you know, Southland. Yeah, Tour of Southland and whatnot. Yeah. Um so yeah, Pagaccio wins that. But it, it's a grueling event. Oh, you gotta watch the Netflix doco. Watch the net I mean like every other sport, if you don't know what's going on with the Tour de France, don't know how it works, or don't care, just watch the Netflix doco and all of a sudden you're an expert. Yeah. So do that. That's what I did and now I can hang out with all the dudes in Lycra at the local cafe and their clip-clops. Yeah, but don't, though. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't. But if I wanted to engage with them, I yeah. could. I, uh, the only yeah. explanation I've heard for the mammal phenomena, the middle-aged men in Lycra, is that for a lot of these dudes, you know, they used to play rugby or football, whatever their sport was back in the day. Then they have kids, and then they sort of get spat out the other end of that, and they stopped playing. Now they can't pick rugby back up again. Why are you looking at but me But they like need that? to get some sort of thing. All I'm saying is... <laughs> Keep playing cricket, because <laughs> at a certain point you're going to show up here on a bike, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, uh, there is there is that around the joints thing as well. Like, yeah. if you play a lot of rugby, your joints give way, and you can't go for a run anymore. Like, no. There's a point where you can't go for a jog, and they say it's either cycling or swimming. Or swimming, and swimming sucks, and so does cycling, and that's why <laughs> that's why I, that's why there's no hope for us. So I might just hit the creatine and just bulk up. Yeah, get, just get jacked. Yeah, just get jacked. Yeah, I don't mind that. It won't be fit. My heart will stop at about fifty-five, but, but that's it, cool. But it was gonna anyway. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta pick and uh, choose your your poisons. Um, I was gonna say yeah on the Netflix doco thing. You're so right because I um everyone's watching the I think it's called Receivers on Netflix. Yes, it's uh, the NFL one. Yeah, my kids are all over that. I mean, the fact that there is fuck every second word is difficult for me because they're on the field yeah, going, "Yeah, right. motherfucker, the fuck." I'm like. Okay, uh, well, I'm trying to. I'm trying not to overreact, but because I know he's going to go on the rugby field this weekend, 
against Northcote, and he's going, "Yo, motherfucker!" He's going, hey, man. "Yeah, fuck you, man!" Like, "Hey, man, fuck that, man!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. Because they're at the North Shore Rugby Club. Because they're the coolest dudes on these receipt wide receivers. Because yeah. they're like loose as cats. They're like quick. They're fast. They're rock stars. Um, mouths like sewers. Yeah, no, I know. That's why they. Um, because you know the NBA is such you sitting so close to the game they were like we could individually like boom mic each player and just follow them around and then they did it for one game didn't televise it and they were like absolutely not no we will not be broadcasting this <laughs> hey get that shit out of here yeah, fuck you man yeah. Um, yeah and then some of the urban gentlemen referring to each other colloquially was a problem as well oh, I see um, so yeah they've been that but yeah the, the receivers one's the next one on my list because I, I got into the like, NFL fantasy thing last year oh yeah it's good it's good I'd recommend it yeah it's it's a hole you go down once you go down the sporting doco hole there's no going back because there's the PGA's full swing tennis, there's the tennis golf. one golf is there, uh, a, um, there's a sprinting one athletics one yes that's that's quite good as well yeah. there's heaps of but it's great because they're all, apart from the golf and tennis, there's heaps of smack talk in the yeah. wall. But the tennis one is, and the golf one is good because they're such tortured souls. All they're more about punishing themselves yes. than their opponent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's so there's a different dynamic. And same with the Formula One, actually, the, the drivers. But then there's the teams and then there's all this politics in the background. Yeah. And it's great. Was Have you watched the receivers one? You have, eh? Yeah. yeah. Is um, Darren Waller in there? Is he, he was a tight end, I think. He no. was in my fantasy team last year. He actually lost me the league. He he was a I think he was a tight end, and he played all season. At the end of the season, his missus gave him the flick, and he recorded an R and B song trying to get her back. And he's like oh. lying in the water with like the waves washing over him and shit. And then he retired. And I was like, if I'd have known he was about to do that, would not have drafted him. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's good CTE and there's bad CTE. Um, the Helen Stein's VIP. We want to hook you up with an exclusive opportunity to win a VIP Warriors experience. You get tickets, cash, money for food, beverages, and vouchers to be kitted out by the legends at Helen Stein's. To get in the draw, text VIP to 3236. You can be a VIP at the Warriors. Thanks to the ACC and Helen Stein's brothers. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Olympics Lane, I was just saying yesterday the uh, opening ceremony is 6.30 on Saturday, our yep. time, but we got our sevens and football dudes um, kicking off. Yep. Uh, but the US have just announced their flag bearer, and it it's going to be LeBron James. How balling is that? That just puts to shame everyone else's flag bearer. Yes. It's like, let's just pick one of the most famous dudes in the world. In history. In history, and give him the flag. Arguably the best player at his sport ever. He's as good at his job as anyone has been. Can we just get him to carry ours as well? Well, I was just thinking that. Who should be our flag bearer? Can he come? Because, what, USA, they're a wee bit behind in New Zealand. He could do a lap with us and yes. then go back to the States team. Just contract him just to do a lap with our flag. We'll just give him his flag. Just give him our flag and we'll go, yeah. Or we'll just, what, we just tailgate behind the US team. But yeah, it's the just- alphabetical... It's, yeah, I, I like watching the opening ceremony. Well, I think if we rung Uzbekistan and said, look, can we yeah. just swap spots? Yeah, yeah, come on. Do us a solid. Yeah. Do us a solid. We want a tailgate behind uh, LeBron. Um, it'll, it's going to be Dame Lisa Carrington, surely. Yep. It'll be our, greatest, the, our greatest Olympia. It'll be the goat in the boat, um, but they have a, a female and a male um, flag bearer. I reckon it should be a shirtless Joe Webber. With a boar on his back. He's the sevens player. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> he was the one who had the full-on, like, dreadlock mullet thing receder in the front. Oh, the yes. Situation. Yeah. I think he should be out there giving it a goosey with, the, like, a pig that he's just pulled out of the bush over his back. Oh, yeah. Who's going to be the dude? I guess uh, Hayden Wilde will be up there. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Uh, Tom Walsh. Tom Walsh. Yeah, true, actually. Tom Walsh. Tom Walsh will probably be in there. Um, there's a, a husband and wife. Uh, duo, we, the equestrians, the equestrians, yeah. yeah. Um, our oldest Olympian as well. I think he's mid forties, and he's a, a horse rider. Price, can't remember his first name. I, I see the, I Tim. see the uh, three time Olympic sure. champion from the UK has just been binned from the Olympic team for, for hitting her horse, whipping her horse's leg. Is it is it Wokeness gone mad? Because <laughs> everyone, I, everyone knows they do it. Because I dare say, if you went back to the nineteen twenty four um, <laughs> Paris Olympics, they would have been beating the shit out of those horses back then. There is only one reason those horses dance like they're on a hot tin roof. Yes, yeah, because they get the shit whipped out of them if they don't. Yes. There's no way you can train a horse to prance around like that. They don't speak English. With, like, treats. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't give them a posse yum or something for doing a little dance. A sugar cube. You do. They do that because if they don't, they get a sh- massive whip around the ass or the Achilles or wherever they do. So Beaten severely, stop, yeah. Stop kidding us. I mean, even Mark Todd got caught. He did. 
He got <coughs> caught giving, doing some whip ass. So, like, <laughs> that, and he did it to the horse as well. But, yeah. Uh, anyway, well, I digress. Yeah. So, who is it going to be? Goat in the boat and. Goat in the boat for sure. I'm picking Tom Walsh. Did he do it at the last Olympics, maybe? I don't know, but that's going to be a huge Gulliver. Him, but him with goat in the boat. Yeah, maybe she goes on the shoulders. I don't know. Do they carry two flags? Oh, now you're asking the hard question. Surely. Surely they do. Do they both hold one flag? Now, that's a long yeah, time to hold the same flag. Like, do they just kind of, oh, anyway, I don't know. We need to do more research yep. into that. Um, instead of doing research into half-baked sports ideas, which I have been doing this morning. And so do it, it is time do it. for another half-baked sports idea. Half-baked sports idea. Race to Survive is a TV show that's been filmed in New Zealand. Have you heard of this? Yeah, I've heard of this. is the Wicker <laughs> yeah, so controversy. They, so they, um, it's just one of those situations where they like drop them off, Bear Grylls style. Yeah. It's like you've just got to make your way down wherever and survive out in the wild. And they found a Wicker and killed it and ate it, <laughs> which always cracks me up when this kind of thing happens. Um and everybody's, you know, people have been going absolutely ape shit online. Like, There's so many wickers, though. Disgusting. Like, shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, well, they are a protected species, and I understand that. Are Pukikos protected? God, no. No. Well, how come they're not? They're, because they're they can survive through. Yeah, they are, but, but it's because there's so many of them. They can survive through anything. They're winged rats. Pukiko, just don't let the colours fool you. They're basically like half half um, pigeon, half Tyrannosaurus Rex, and they just keep, that's why you see them in, in every big city. There's like Pukeko, like right in town. I, I see wicked everywhere as well. Yeah, you go out to Cowo <laughs> Island, you can't get rid of the little shits. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it's a is that a predator free island? I think they're trying to make it one. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, um, long short of it is you can't eat those, and so they've been told off. And now there's all these everybody's sounding off in the comments. Oh, it's actually yeah. the producer's fault. It's this fault. Blah 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 blah. And this happens from time to time. Someone will eat a bloody um, wood pigeon or something, you know, and then get in deep shit. They look delicious, they, though. They look, look, they look so, so tasty. fat and tasty. So tasty. A wicker, not so much. No, that looks terrible. But yeah. my solution to all of this, and my half baked sports idea that's not related to sport at all, uh, is farm them. If we farmed wicker. Well, no animal's ever gone extinct from farming. Are sheep or cows going to go extinct anytime soon? Are chickens going to go extinct anytime soon? This is not a half-baked sports idea or a half-baked idea because I think there is a guy who does farm wicker <laughs> and it's called Wicker Wicker Woo and Jeremy Wells, <laughs> oh, yes, Jeremy Wells right. went and visited him. I think he's out on the Chathams or an island where they're allowed, they're permitted to, oh, to eat, eat wicker. Sounds like the chance. Um and he's farms them and he's he makes wicker socks and stuff. So they pluck them and they make uh garments out of them and eat them. Wicker wicker woo. This is uh, what he, I'm saying. He visited the guy. It's and the reason it's called wicker wicker woo is because that's how he calls them over to feed you. Go, wicker wicker woo. Oh, he probably could have kept that one in house, to be fair. <laughs> I don't know if I would have been broadcasting that. Um every dairy farmer has a horrifically embarrassing way that they call their cows in. I wouldn't be broadcasting it to the world. Um but yeah, wicker wicker woo. There you you go. do the same thing with Kiwis. Yeah. You could do the same thing with any of the endangered species that we have. Tuatara, I don't know if they're good eating or not. Uh, I guess the problem with the kiwi is the gestation period and the fact that they only lay one egg. Yeah, well, can we do some, I mean, like we didn't we genetically modify a sheep a while ago and there was that controversy about that sheep? Yeah. yeah. Can't we just genetically modify a, a, a kiwi to fart out a few more eggs? Well, yeah, well, the only Maybe way... Maybe make them a bit smaller? Yeah, that's right. And yeah. the only way we could do that would be if we were farming them. That would then lend itself to like a Jurassic Park type situation where the kiwi egg is so big, you could conceivably plant more DNA in there mm. and then bring them back. Yep. Now all of a sudden you only got to farm one of those a year and you're sweet for Look, the rest of the year. We're already in trouble with Doc about our, our stuffed hawk. <clears throat> Okay, so oh yeah, yes. Yeah, so we don't need to. We don't need to roll, roll, you know, roll them up even more <laughs> with our suggestions of farming kiwi. But I, I think I'd rather eat. A, would you rather eat a kiwi or a wicker? Uh, kiwi. Yeah, way fatter, eh? And just funnier, I think if you, you know, if you're telling someone from overseas and they're like, "Oh, have you ever seen a kiwi bird?" It's like, "Ever seen one? Yeah. I, mean, I ate one." Mm. <laughs> I think that's just a but much better answer. But I don't think I don't people, think most people but, know what a wicker is. But people overseas, you go, oh, "I ate a kiwi." He goes, "Oh, right, okay, you can eat them, can you?" But I don't think they. Oh, yeah, they true. wouldn't but know that there's only about 50 of the brown spotted ones. Because yeah, everyone well, else's national bird is just everywhere. Yeah. Or, yeah, like in, in Sri Lanka, their national bird is called a jungle fowl. It's basically a jungle chicken. <laughs> so it runs around in the jungle looking all colourful. But uh, yeah. that's their national bird. It's a jungle chicken. 
So maybe we should change ours to a seagull or something. Bin chicken. <laughs> a sparrow. It's bin chicken. Yeah, the kiwi. The oh, the fantail. There's heaps of fantails. There are a lot well, of Not fantails. good eating, though. <clears throat> not in your house. Uh, yeah, so anyway, farming wicker, farming kiwi, that's my idea. Keep them alive. Sheep aren't going out of style anytime soon. Wicker, wicker, woo. Just before we go to an air break, Stack Changi Sports Scholarship Lane. Uh, we're binge watching Sport is a Sport. We've got a few more of these to give away yet. If you want to enter that, uh, draw. You can text CHIP to 3236. Follow the link and you could be in, in to win the ultimate ACC prize pack. All right, we need to take a break because when we come back, we have a dozen yours please voicemails to get through. <sighs> so ready. <laughs> a dozen, okay. Yours please, brought to you by Lida, home of the lasagna topper. Just couldn't bring myself to leave any of these out today, so we're going to get through all of them. First caller here, yours please. Yeah, good day there, team. Um, hey, just a quick call regarding South Canterbury. I've actually just picked up the signing of Chiefs legend Timumba Hicker Elliott. So I feel like there could be a call to Hicker um, about all these fuck South Canterbury uh, comments uh, to see if anyone wants to go say it to his face. Anyway, cheers. Yeah, so he. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's a retired professional yep. athlete now, Hick Elliott. Yep. He's moved down to the McKenzie country and he's playing um, for McKenzie down there in the local comp. He's just been picked for the South Canterbury squad, obviously. Pretty handy rugby union yep. footballer. Um, I, I like this. So all the people that are saying, fuck South Canterbury, we should direct them to Hick Elliott and just be like, would you say it to his face? <laughs> and evidently people have been too because there were um, there was like a – like an investigation or like a, a an official complaint laid because people were sledging him from the sideline and there was like unnecessary roughage on him as well, which is very South Canterbury to be like, oh, you played for the All Blacks, did you? Oh, oh let's have a go then, you know? And you this seen is the what, size of him? I know. But this is why I <clears throat> I would – if I was an ex-professional athlete, I just would not go back and play that sport again because everybody's going to be out there like wanting to take your head off. If you're a cricketer, they're going to want to bowl you, bounce you out or whatever. Like uh, Kyle Mills did to... Uh, yeah, to Brian Lara. <laughs> Brian Lara. I, but I can see in rugby it's a bit different. Cricket, I can see why it's there's no win. Yeah. Um, because you get as you get older, a bit slower reactions go. In rugby, you're still a big stake, and you can still yeah. cause some damage. So if someone's giving you stick, I'd say to you, if I was a hicker rally, you'd be like, mate, run it straight. Yeah. Run it straight, mate. Run stop it. running your mouth off and run it straight. And watch Hicker Elliot send them into the <laughs> sub canopy. <laughs> And he's going to be doing it all season long for South Canterbury. Can we do something down there? We need to go down to South Canterbury. Can we go to a South Canterbury North Otago game? Yeah, I'd love Let's to. Let's do that. I the only, shout the bar. The only problem is, I feel like most people down there aren't aware of this, and <laughs> they. Won't, I think that's even better. They won't be until I show up and we do, run this whole promo around fuck South Canterbury. And everyone's like, why is he back here? First of all, at all, and secondly. Why has he brought all these people saying fuck South Canterbury? Well, we need to unfuck South Canterbury. That's what we need to. <laughs> the campaign to unfuck South Canterbury. <laughs> You're getting paid from uh, South Canterbury tourism. <laughs> that broke. They can't even send the team up to play for the Shield. Uh, all right, I'm launching an unfuck South Canterbury. <laughs> That's, that needs to be the new sign off for every voicemail. <laughs> unfuck South Canterbury. Hashtag unfuck South Canterbury. All right, uh, another 11 of them to get through. Let's keep going. Yours, please. Yeah, good day, Flowers. Just following up on my nice, uh sports at school, what you came up with, invented, etc. cetera. Um, did you guys ever have a caretaker or male teacher that would come down and play with the kids at, well, that sounds bad, play sports with the kids at lunchtime? We had one of each, and uh, they used to bounce the shit out of each other playing cricket. And I think it was all because they were after the same female teacher. Oh, oh, interesting. Bit of drama. And- so a little bit of peacocking going on. It's yeah. So the groundsman come in and get a bit of peacocking in front of the staff room. Perhaps. We did have a teacher who was like quite a handy basketball player. It was the only male teacher that we had. And we'd play rugby um, with a ball, like a soccer ball. But, and he would come play at lunchtime as well. But the thing was he would have to dribble the ball <laughs> while we were playing. So everyone else it was just like tackle rugby. But then if the teacher got the ball, he had to dribble it to give him some sort of handicap. Oh, right. Because otherwise it was too easy. We did have, um, shout out to Mr. Matheson. He was our groundskeeper when I was at primary school. One day we were playing tennis and a kid was sitting up on the umpire's chair yeah. thing. Just kept hitting balls at me while I was trying to play. 
I was like, fucking Simon Green, turn around, slam the ball at him. Well, Simon comes down off the thing, starts chasing me with his racket. So we're doing laps. There's two tennis courts, and yeah. we're just doing laps of the two tennis courts. And I'm running past. Mrs. Firth is standing on the sideline. And I was like, help me. She's like, I can't. You know, all the teachers mm. are female. They couldn't stop him. And I kept doing laps, and then I came back past again. She goes, we've gone to get Mr. Matheson. <laughs> come back around again. <laughs> He's on his way. Come back around again. Just keep running until he gets there. And so I'm doing laps of the fence while Simon's just in a fit of rage trying to kill me with this tennis racket because I've branded him with the tennis ball. Um, yeah, yeah, and had to wait for Mr. Matheson to come from the other side of the field. It sounds like Mr. Matheson might have been quite busy. A busy man. Yeah, well, we, you know, it's like a rural school, so these massive sprawling grounds is way yeah. down the back. Uh, we had a, a, a caretaker called uh, Malcolm. Malcolm was oh. so deaf. <laughs> That's how he used to talk like Lance Keynes, and it was impossible to talk oh, to like him about. Actual deaf. Yeah, it was impossible to talk to him about what condition we wanted our pitch in for the cricket because he was also the groundsman. Mm. So it was very hard to communicate, a lot of sign language, but he was a great man, Malcolm. Uh, R.I.P. I don't think he's around anymore. I, um, I um, he allowed he allowed Jeremy Wells the keys to the groundsman shed, and Wells would be stoned high as a kite at high school and get hold of the roller, and he would roll the pitch all night. That's the most Jeremy shit. Of all he time. before a inter school game, he rolled it. He couldn't sleep. He rolled it all night, and he just turned it into an absolute dust bowl, <laughs> in which Vittori came out and turned it square. <laughs> <laughs> How? Oh, jeez! We needed to get Jerry out on the on the roller before Black Caps games. Yeah, totally. He, all night. Uh, so, what are you doing? What are you? Why are you up all night rolling? It's like, oh, <laughs> God bless him. Um, Malcolm was it? Yeah, Malcolm. That God was going to be my name. Was it? Yeah, they were going to call me Malcolm. Big Mal. I don't know how my life would have been different, but uh, guarantee it would have. Another caller here. Yours, please. G'day, team. Andrew from Napes here. Mm. Just catching up on some old podcasts and uh, just come across the one following the second test against England in Auckland when you regaled us with a story via Piney of Gabriel who couldn't set up his box. Can I employ all the ACC youngsters who get invited to set up their grandparents' box to go and set it up, stick it on nine, leave it there, don't <laughs> tell them the code, make him sit through it. Cheers. Yeah, poor Gabriel. Uh, what a legend he was. I've been asked so many times if that was a setup by us. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because it did sound it did sound like an AI old man. Yeah, and also all the things you were, he was complaining about are like all the things that boomers traditionally complain about yeah. about us. Yeah. Um, but no, it wasn't a setup. And yeah, absolutely. If you are called around to your parents, your grandparents' place to set up their skybox for them, or even show them how the app works, chuck it on ours and yep. don't tell them how to change it. <laughs> now the call here, yours please. Yeah, g'day fellas. Love the Matt and Jerry show. Oh, fuck. Those are my notes for the next voicemail. <laughs> Shit, that's embarrassing. Anyway, I reckon the best way to describe the difference between league and union to Americans is like softball and baseball. The same, but different. Anyway, fuck Taranaki, dot, dot, dot. Oh, we, did you listen to the podcast yesterday we were talking to Heath? No. About around uh, what's considered pass ag in a text or oh. thing situation? So I've only just found out that I use a thumbs up at the end of my, like I'll write yep. something like, yep, sweet, I'll do that, and I put a thumbs yep. up because otherwise I come across quite curt. Yep. Apparently that comes across, across as quite pass ag. And also the dot, 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 and Heath pointed out you use the dot, dot, dot yep. quite a bit. I do. Do you mean it? Do you intend it to be passive aggressive? No, not really. I just, just I leave the conversation open for you to reply. Yeah, right. So, Manaya, why aren't you at work? This, dot, is, dot, dot. <laughs> this is what I was. And, and then you go, it's open invitation to please respond. And you go, ah, oh, I shat my pants. Sorry. And I'll be like, thumbs up. Cool. <laughs> and then I take the thumbs up as a sign yeah. of aggression. No, because we're saying, like, some people do take it as a, the dot, dot, dot is like, the, a, a pass ag thing but you'll send a message and just be like hey great work this week dot 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 have a great weekend dot 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 and it's like not meant pass ag at all but then you send me like the fuck did he mean have a great week what is that I tell you I tell you what I tell you what really fucks with boomers and that is how they read text messages they lose their mind oh, like my my mum if I send just yes back it goes will you be home this afternoon yes oh sorry I won't come yeah. over there and I'm like yeah. no no I just said yes Goes well, yeah, but the way you said it, well, if I say, "Sorry, uh, hey, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Hope everything's good. Yeah, we're around this afternoon. It'd be great to see you." That's what they expect back. Yeah, but then not a just a call. 
or something. So just this tension just keeps going backwards and forwards. It's like, I just, think, it's just a yes. I think as a people, just everyone that speaks English needs to figure out like a universal, what like is there, the, this is the PASAG emoji, this is the sarcasm emoji, you know, and we all just need to agree on the thing because, you know, your mum, when you say yes, and she goes, oh, that's PASAG, so you might go yes and then put a thumbs up. She, yeah. she likes that. Then you send that to someone else. Like, what's the fuck thumbs up all about? Or yes, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, exactly. Which is, yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. That's how I read it. Uh, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, shit. How many have we got to go through? Nine? Yeah, more? fuck yeah. All right, keep going. Yours, please. G'day. Uh, petition for G Lane not to go to Vegas or become a resident of Vegas for a month or so. Go get a citizenship, get married. Meet Elvis, meet fucking Trump, Biden, do whatever you got to do, overnight bride, overnight citizenship. Don't go to Vegas, don't let Keezy commentate, go to the Warriors. Yeah, so this, uh, yeah, yeah. to I, circumvent the curse. Yeah, but I mean, it's quite hard. I mean, look, I'd love to get a green card. It's not that easy. You don't just go to Vegas and, and marry <laughs> Elvis's assistant. You, you've got to get a green card. It's quite involved. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I'd love to. If you can get me a green card, I'm yep. into it. All right. Otherwise, I'll see you in Vegas. All right. Another caller here. Yours, please. G'day, boys. Um, just on the topic of the Olympics chat, sort of having to think what, what we could do to really push the sport forward, you know. Um, I was kind of thinking maybe a bit of a mashup between the Summer and Winter Olympics. We could go for, like, a long jump with ski boots on. That would be a good laugh. Um, very entertaining. Um or we could go for the snowboarding pole bolt. It's a great <laughs> height there. It's a terrible accident, for sure. What do you think? Yeah, I love this. I, uh, the thing that springs to mind immediately for me is long jump luge. Yep. So you come sh flying down the luge and then you just get shot out the end of it. Yep. And just how far can you go and then you land in a sandpit. Ice hockey rugby. Oh, yeah. I mean, ice hockey basically yep. is rugby at this yeah. point, but yeah. Yeah, oh, that'd be quite good. Um Anything Some, on skates. Something to do with gymnastics and some winter sport. Gymnastics on ice. Yeah, it'd yeah. be good. Um, yeah, yeah, I like the pole, the pole vault. Anything to do with like javelin uh, and downhill. Yeah. So you, yeah, once you hit the hit the finish line, you got to biff the javelin. So you got to do the whole downhill with the, holding a javelin up above your head. And then as you hit the line, you got to throw it. Yeah, you got to stop. And yeah. if you go over the line, then it's a default. Or live animals come running across and you just hiff a javelins at and them. And a and caribou. New javelins just pull out of your back <laughs> and just... Yeah, or like, you know, conversely, you could take the ski shooting. What do they call that? The duathlon where you like ski along and then you got to stop and uh, shoot a yes, thing. Yeah. What if you're just like running through a safari park in South Africa with your gun, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you just got to... You're running across, you got to stop. And every now and then a, a small child goes, ah! And you can't shoot that one. Oh, you know, yes. Like, like on the kind of... Like you're the, training for the Navy yeah, Seals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you shoot that one, you're disqualified. Yeah. Not real kids, obviously. Just no, no, Pictures no, no. of real Pop-ups. Yeah. Uh, yep, love that. Love the snowboarding pole vault. Another yeah. one here. Yours, please. G'day, mate. Yeah. Just on the Nude Olympics. Uh, I wonder if they could use that spray-on shoe technique for your, uh, your downstairs operation. Might be required if you're a male rower, because uh, I'm not yeah. sure you want your bits dangling around. Uh, one of those boats. I did, yeah. So we're talking about should we go back to the original mm. Olympics and do them all nude? But mm. I, I guess what I didn't factor in is that they didn't have boats with moving seats back in the original Olympics or cycling. Cycling, yeah. Uh, they certainly didn't have winter Olympics, so no. you know you couldn't do the bobsled stark naked. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't. Maybe it is completely nude except for the spray on. Like, have you seen those spray on shoes? We were talking about them yeah, yesterday. Yeah. You the spray on shoes now, spray on downstairs loincloth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to help you get down the luge. I like it. Another call at your space. G'day, lads. I've always uh, had the idea of combining Olympic sports so you run them at the same time. So, for example, you could have the 200 metre run and the javelin going all at the same time. And the, uh, the javelin guys are trying to nail the runners. Uh, combined teams win points that way, or you could just put the hammer throw court next to the hockey turf, or put the uh, the triathlon in the same area as the rowing. So it could be a good bit of fun, eh? <laughs> I quite like that. I quite like that you could put the hammer throw uh, like in the sailing. So it's like basically sending uh, cannonballs out into the ocean. You're gonna fire it off the side of the yeah, laser. Yeah. So, so basically, the the hammer throwers are on shore. 
mm. and then the like 40, oh. the 49er sails are sailing offshore <laughs> and they're basically hiffing, <laughs> hiffing steel balls out into the harbour. I like that. I love the um, triathlon at the same time as the rowing as well. Like, oh, you're worried about the poos in the sand? <laughs> what about getting cleaned up by the men's eight? <laughs> <laughs> foiling, foiling, uh, windsurfing. Oh my god, getting sashimi <laughs> by the foilers. <laughs> just, a, I'm a big fan of this. I'm always a big fan of the super event as well. Just put it all together and in, in one, and just see what happens. The hell in the cell. Yeah, yeah. Still, I mean, the the marathon at the same time as the cycling as well. So, there's a couple of good videos out there of dudes getting skewered by pole vaults. Oh, uh, not pole vaults, javelins. javelins. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's ugly. Oh yeah, that's it's, what yeah, they were but it's usually for. but it's usually marshals. Yes, it's, it's always it's a marshal. Some old dude with a clipboard who just gets pegged from behind. Yeah, and he's like, Aah! or maybe to speed the whole thing up, like you could run um, the hundred meters heats from opposite ends. That's <laughs> 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 running straight. <laughs> <laughs> See how they go. Um, brilliant idea. Thank you very much for the call. Another one here, yours, please. Oh, good. I get off your cousin and I in G Lane. Jake here from Ealing Station, Mid Canterbury. Here's the thing. Every time. To Marty Martin goes pig hunting. The Warriors win. Magic round. Him and his horse and his dogs. We beat the Panthers. Dolphins. Him and Jazz. The Cowboys. Him and Dylan Walker. And when we beat the Broncos. Him, Dylan Walker and Jazz Tavanga went pig hunting. This is proven. Let the man go pig hunting midweek. We win. Fuck South Canterbury. Thanks, Jack. I think he was the original fuck South Canterbury. Yeah, I think he was. Um, I like it. I think, uh, you know, there's a photo that came out of him and Jazz Tavanga, and he's on a um, horse to Mighty Martin is. Jazz Tavanga's pulling a pig out of the bush. Uh, probably the first warning sign that he wasn't in rehab. Uh, and <laughs> I just thought when I saw that photo, uh, to Mighty Martin is the man that every New Zealand bloke thinks he is. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we all think we all think of ourselves these rugged city. Yeah. Like, yeah, I live in the city now. Plan in our good yeah, looking, yeah. kill pigs. That was his week. He went out and killed a pig with his hands, and then on the weekend he played halfback for the Warriors. Like if it was a movie, you'd be like, oh bullshit. Um, I love it. Send him out. Send him out into the bush. Send him out in the bush today. Oh, we'll don't, don't even send him to the bush. Just send him to some farm to kill a pig. If send the pig to him. Yeah, if we can't. Yeah, someone bring a pig to Mount Smart and just let him kill it. Sacrifice it. Yeah, someone please at halfway just before the game. Um, <laughs> that's brilliant. Another caller on the line here. Yours, please. Hey, fellas. On uh, Naked Olympics, uh, doing the, the Olympics naked, um, would the crowd have to be naked too? Mm. Anyway, fuck something? <laughs> <laughs> no, the crowd doesn't have to be nude. I think that's a step yeah. too far. No, I think we yeah. – I think – do you remember when the NBA brought in the T-shirt um, jerseys? They played a season where they had T-shirts instead of singlets. Ooh, so nice. they had like an alternate strip and it was a T-shirt. And the issue was is because fans were showing up to games in singlets and no one wants to sit next to a big sweaty dude in a singlet, in a singlet yeah, right. for like two hours. So you add on top of that, he's also got no pants on, you know. Mm. I don't think we want that. No. It's only for the athletes. Yeah. Uh, another caller here. Hey Murray, first time caller, long time listener. Um, just think about the alternative Olympic sports. I mean, I know you guys have talked about the All Star Weekend a lot, but uh, last day of the Olympics, every country puts forward some athletes for bull rush. I think that'd be bloody good. You got seven players, of course, but then you got your track guys, you got field people that got to throw some tin around, you got the swimmers, they're just slippery, I guess. Could, could be a go. All right. I like that. I like that. It's like the ultimate ultimate fighter at the end or the ultimate athlete yeah. at the end. Only issue is, once your event's over, you're on a tear. Yep. You know what I mean? If your event's over in the first couple of days, you are on a tear in the village. You're on a tear in, in Paris. The last thing you want to do is drag your carcass out on the last day and play a game of bull rush against LeBron James. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you've just spent four years thinking about getting to this, this point. And that's another great point is like, what if you're just a gymnast? You know, you spin around on the pommel horse yeah. thing. And now all of a sudden, David Liddy's running at you, and you're going to try and figure that out. It'd be a massive discrepancy. But you know, for the for the novelty, it'd be it'd be tremendous. I mean, even if, even if it's arm wrestling or something, maybe some there's some other sports or or have maybe a great leveler. It's beer pong, darts, and pool. <laughs> maybe it's like something a bit more kind of a boat uh, race. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's it. A boat race. An Olympic boat race. An Olympic boat race. There at, at the closing ceremony. Each country nominates 10 athletes, five women, five men, and they we have an Olympic boat race. Yep. I'm all on board with that. So uh, simple. God, they would be so smashed after that. Oh, it'd be so good. The fittest human beings on, on the planet. Yeah. Crushing piss. Uh, one last call here. Call the yours, please. 
Hey Murray, first time caller, long time listener. Uh, just think about the alternative ah, Olympic sports. I mean, I know you guys have talked about the All Star. It is the same guy. Um, all right, then we'll bin him. Will we get another one? That's it. Great. Thank God we got through it. Uh, thank you very much for sending them all. I wanted to make sure that I played them all. And thank you very much for joining us on a Wednesday edition of the Agenda Podcast. We'll be back tomorrow for a Throwback Thursday. Um, we'll see you then. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast, brought to you by Export Ultra. For more episodes, like and follow on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.